Why is it important for designers today to consider and have an influence over the environment? Well, I, I think any discussion about design and environment needs to just recognise that we're at a really critical period in human history. I think we're facing an industrial revolution of a scale that has never been greater than, than any other in human history, where the change that will take place in society over the next 20, maybe 50 years, but possibly more like 20 years, is going to be very, very significant indeed. Every aspect of the way that we produce, the way that we consume, all infrastructure and lifestyles will change dramatically as we enter now a new low carbon or no carbon future, that is with out very much contribution to our energy from fossil fuels. And we've had 150 years or more of dependence on growth and development based on the exploitation of fossil fuels. So we have all of that investment in the past which now is called into question in terms of the future. So that we can see in Australia that this is a very, very important issue politically. It seems to have been one of the contributing factors to the change in the federal government. And we are no longer in a situation where we can talk about a choice between an economy or the uh, dealing with climate change. Climate change is the future econ economy, and we the faster we can recognise that, the more that we will be in that future economy as it ev evolves over the next period, and particularly over the next sort of decade or so. So for Australia, this is a, re a significant business challenge, firstly, to embrace that new uh, low-carbon future, a future based on a reduction of, of greenhouse gases in everything we do, and that's where innovation will lie. And that's the innovation that's going to take us forward in the world. And we in Victoria should be part of that. And we have the best resource to be part of that, which is Victoria's design schools. We know from work that actually took place here in Victoria, which led the world in the early 90s, that about 80% of the impact of everything we design, whether they be products or buildings or anything in between, so anything from small appliances to cars to buildings, about 80% of the environmental impact of those um, products are determined at the design stage, 80%. So at the design stage, we can make the difference between the, uh, the scale of impact that those buildings or those products are going to have. We in Victoria today can see that there are leading buildings, for example, designed by local architects as well as some by international architects, where those buildings perform two or three times better than the average building, the average new building. And they're, they're, being, they're being built, they're, they're, the clients uh, have decided that the investment is worthwhile and that the greater it's not that much greater investment but that the outcomes are really warrant whatever investment, extra investment it is. And in the end, it's just a design challenge to make sure that our buildings perform in a way in which they use less water and less energy and contribute less to climate change. And that, that's an, when you take the built environment as a whole, that's a possibility of making an enormous change. And in uh, everyday products from electronics to cars and so on, we can see globally that there are new innovations, new designs coming out which do have that really considerable reduction in, in environmental impact. So Victorian businesses, firstly, who want to be part of this enormous change globally in the global market, but also increasingly in Australia as we now have a greater focus on regulations and standards which will drive energy consumption and greenhouse gas down, their opportunities lie in partnering with Victorian designers and their skills and the network of researchers in places at, in universities at RMIT, at, at Melbourne University, at Monash, etc., uh, who can help those designers and the clients and the businesses understand what can be done to produce new commercial outcomes, new products, but with really significant reductions in impacts. And it's those products, if they're designed well that, and made more desirable than the old products which, which gave more greenhouse gases, and that's also a school of designers, not just how to make things 
so that they have less impact, but how to make them more sexy, more fun, more desirable than those that, that are more polluting or more, more deleterious to the environment. And by using the skills of designers, Victorian businesses can participate in this new economy and you can use the enormous wealth and history of design in that area in Victoria to achieve that. Um, there is a but in what I've just mm. said, and that is that now we can understand already the modelling is such that, that most governments and certainly most international agencies can understand that we cannot get to a sustainable future, a future which is not going to suffer all the worst project projections of climate change by simply doing more efficiently what we currently do. And we've known that for some time. The, Glo the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, a, an international body representing major companies, hundreds of major companies around the world, has been saying that for since 2002. So although in the short term the focus of design and businesses will be on dramatic improvements to their current products, to their current buildings, that will not be sufficient to reduce uh, the impacts of global warming, to reduce the impacts of climate change to the, to the levels which we now need, know we need to. The, the fact is that we need changes in the organisation of the way that we, uh, that we live, the change in organisation to the way that we produce and consume, and changes, dramatic changes to the infrastructure of our lives. And that's a very big task. And infrastructure and those kind of changes normally take in the order of, of 20 years at least. And I mean, we have governments now making decisions about investments in infrastructure which are intended to last for 50 years. And they're having to do that knowing that they can't assume that in 20 years what they're building that infrastructure for will be appropriate to that new future. Are there designers who are stepping up to that? Is, is there a, a role for designers as opposed to being a service industry to being leaders in influencing? I think designers, uh, what I'm hearing from designers and design practices is that they are moving from a position of waiting till clients ask for them to deal with environment to take a much more proactive position. And the climate, the, the political and community climate in Australia is right for that. So that designers quite recently were saying to me that when they're presented with a brief for uh, a design project in whatever area, if there's no reference to environment, they write it in. And then when the client comes to say, but why this? They now have the, uh, the ability to refer to change that they can see is happening, to things that are in the newspaper every day about changes, potential changes in standards, potential changes in regulations, um, new in investment schemes, new um, a, a coming carbon tax, for example, to say to, to their clients, you have to future-proof, and that's what design will give you. So I think design practices are moving from being reactive to proactive, and this is the perfect time for that. But, the, but what we hope is to be able to provide the, the wherewithal for design practices to move even outside of the work that they, curr they currently do for clients and to move to the bigger and longer term picture. And through projects like the Eco Innovation Lab and additional funding that we hope will flow from that project, we want to see designers involved in the bigger think rethinking that has to take place about how we can have um, a desirable, um, livable future, but one which is dramatically different in terms of the, the, the base expenditure on energy and the production of greenhouse gases.